Well, we've been very fortunate to be involved in a number of the uh, NIH clinical studies looking at both patients who are on dialysis and also pre-dialysis patients. Uh, if you look through the history of the studies that we've been involved with, the HEMO study was done in the 1990s, and that was done to try and answer the question why mortality rates of dialysis patients in the U.S. were higher than mortality rates uh, in Europe and, and other parts of the uh, developed world. And the question was whether more dialysis would be better. And this study was actually a negative study. We found that in doing traditional three times a week dialysis that uh, patients did not have a significantly improved uh, outcome by doing dialysis for an extra 30 to 45 minutes each treatment. Because of this study, the question came about, well, maybe we need to do much more dialysis than what was done with traditional three times a week dialysis, and that brought us to the frequent hemodialysis network studies. One is a study in daily dialysis where patients are doing dialysis six days a week for a period of time somewhere between about a, a one and a half and three hours, whereas in the overnight nocturnal study, patients were doing dialysis six nights a week so they were doing dialysis for 30 to 36 hours a week, much more than the uh, 9 to 12 hours that a traditional dialysis patient does. We've also been involved with studies looking at acute renal failure. Acute renal failure uh, in the intensive care unit setting has a mortality rate of 50 percent. Uh, and the, the ATN study was designed to see if more dialysis would be helpful in those patients, and unfortunately, that was a negative trial. Uh, dialysis patients also uh, have their lifeline, which is their access, uh, and that's how um, with uh, patients with AV fistulas and Gore-Tex grafts receive their dialysis therapy, and patients have many complications from this, and the uh, access study was a way to look and see how those new accesses uh, might be preserved uh, and how they might be functional for those patients. So we've been involved in a continuum in terms of dialysis studies, and now we're also engaged in studies with uh, patients with chronic kidney disease who are not on dialysis. The SPRINT study will be one of the largest studies uh, ever done in the U.S. to look at patients who have chronic kidney disease who are not yet on dialysis. And the key question is, how aggressively do you control blood pressure? Uh, and this study is designed to look at a goal blood pressure systolic of 140 versus a goal systolic blood pressure of 120. Does that lower blood pressure help preserve kidney function? Are there complications for uh, patients who are maintained at this uh, lower level of uh, blood pressure? Uh, they anticipate that more than 3,000 patients nationwide with chronic kidney disease will be enrolled in this study. Uh, and this is going to go a long way to answer a basic question of what blood pressure should we target for chronic kidney disease patients. It, it certainly is going to be an extraordinarily important study in learning how to manage chronic kidney disease patients appropriately. The SPRINT study is set up around five clinical coordinating centers. Wake Forest is one of the clinical coordinating centers, and I'm involved with the clinical coordinating center. Wake Forest is also the data coordinating center for the entire study nationwide, and I'm also involved as a principal investigator as a clinical site here at Wake Forest, primarily to recruit patients with chronic kidney disease. So I'm involved with several aspects of the study and we're about halfway through in terms of recruiting patients for this particular study.